If you search on YouTube for high-speed rail, pretty much every result focuses on the US or Europe. In fact, YouTube even prompts me to specify if I'm interested in a project somewhere in the West or perhaps East Asia if I'm feeling adventurous. But there is a lot less focus on high-speed rail in the Global South. This is particularly true for West Africa, which despite its huge and expanding population, rarely takes center stage in transportation discussions. So let's change that. Today, we are getting into the details on rail in West Africa. What routes and cities specifically are worth prioritizing? What has been done so far? And why is high-speed rail actually more important and worthwhile in West Africa than almost anywhere else? All that and more on this episode of Transit World, videos on all things transportation with a focus on the developing world. Let's start basic. This is Africa. It's huge, home to around 1.5 billion people, 20% of the world. This is Sub-Saharan West Africa, home to around a third of all Africans, and over a third of them live in this corridor along the coast. There are very few places on Earth where you can find over 150 million people concentrated in a linear corridor, and where those places do exist, you typically see a robust and expanding rail network. However, that's just not the case here. So why is that? There are many references online to new trains in West Africa, but very few concrete plans. For decades, various politicians and government entities have talked about trains, high-speed or otherwise, connecting east-west through sub-Saharan Africa. And there's a bunch of long-range and master-planned documents that mention rail. ECOWAS, which is essentially the EU for West Africa, mentions a rail connecting Abidjan to Lagos in their 2050 master plan. And the African Union has similar ambitions listed in their 2063 vision. But these plans are just conceptual and lack funding, and as far as I can tell, there's been no real analysis done. Various countries have their own rail long-range plans that mention parts of this corridor. Some of them include more detailed concepts and plans for specific projects, although some are also <laughs> comically unspecific, almost to the point of bleeding into the abstract art genre. I mean, just look at this post-impressionist cactus that a consultant gave to Togo to show their quote-unquote super long-term transportation plan east of Lome. Anyway, these plans mostly call for construction more than a decade in the future, often prioritizing other rail corridors that better serve in-country needs ahead of broader pan-African needs. Ghana is a good example of this. Their 2020 railway master plan has the coastal east-west route listed at the end of their phased priorities. And honestly, this probably does make sense for Ghana, but does it make sense for the broader region? Well, that's exactly the kind of question that I want to try to answer. So this video serves as a follow-up to my discussion on this corridor in my Hidden Links video, and we're going to get deeper into route planning, station siting, and better understanding how many people from where would actually decide to take a train that connects across West Africa. We're starting once more with the gravity model, which again approximates demand between two cities based on their populations and distances. But this time around, we're using more specific numbers. For population, I'm going to map out where I think would be reasonable to site each station, and then look specifically at the population that lives within a 20-kilometer catchment area, which is a typical radius often used in high-speed rail planning studies. For distance, we're going to try to approximate the actual distance of the rail by averaging the straight line distance and the driving distance between each city. This should give a good approximation of the gentler curves and streamlining used by high-speed rail compared to roads, but also account for topography. And if this sounds familiar, City Nerd did the same thing in a high-speed rail video, so you can thank him. I mean, this channel is really just like 80% ripping off City Nerd, but with an international focus and less witty remarks. Next, we're going to calibrate the gravity scores to better approximate specific demand for high-speed rail. You may have seen graphics like this before that show the relative time for different modes of travel over different distances. The lowest line at any point on the chart represents the fastest option. And this graph is a classic. It's used a lot in high-speed rail discussion, especially those on YouTube. Again, looking at you, city nerd. The usual three lines are driving your own car versus high-speed rail versus traveling by air. And I am going to modify the first line a little to better account for conditions in the global south, particularly in this region. I want to try to more broadly include conventional road transport, not just driving, and account for the slower travel times that are more common in congested regions of the world and places where roads may not allow for the fast cruising speeds between cities you see in the global north. To determine how many people at any given point will choose to take high-speed rail versus another mode, I'm taking the inverse of each travel time, then I'm finding the percentage of the sum of all inverses. So, that sounds a little complicated, but here's an example. 
at 300 kilometers, which is near the largest advantage for high-speed rail, but also a somewhat reasonable option for traveling by road and air, I'm assuming a little under half of people take high-speed rail, and about a quarter decide to travel by road, and another quarter by air. This creates a scoring system, which is different than what I used in the Hidden Links video. So here's a few examples of scores from city pairs to give you an idea of what we're working with. Anything 100 or over is a pretty good slam dunk for successful high-speed rail. 30 to 100 is also a solid score. Paris to Lyon, for example, which is often cited as a successful high-speed rail, has a city pair score of 34. And anything in the 20 to 30 range is often decent as well. This time, I'm looking at every station that could make sense to have on the line, not just the megacities. So I started with the cities identified at a high level in my previous video, and then I expanded until we no longer had any city pairs with 50 or more points. Then I looked at where else would make sense to stop along the way. I picked intermediate cities that had at least 300,000 population in their catchment area and were at least 50 kilometers away from any other stations. I also tried to incorporate existing rail plans and studies as much as I could and made sense. Nigeria has taken the most action along this corridor, detailing a route from Lagos, connecting to Port Harcourt and destinations to the southeast. And they even secured, apparently, some funding by a Chinese backer, although that seemingly fell through. Either way, I tried to align with those plans as best I could. For each stop, I also looked at where it may be sensible to place a station within the city. Obviously, it's nice to have your station right in the center of the city, but I wanted to model what may actually be feasible. I'm not going to assume that you're tunneling right into downtown for every station along the route. To do this, I looked at any hints I could find in master plans, although I didn't get too far with that. So I reviewed maps of existing rights of ways in each city that might be used, both rail as well as utility corridors and highways with medians or large buffers. And I can't stress enough, this station sighting exercise is extremely preliminary. Although the ECOWAS maps seem to take some pretty broad strokes with their alignments as well. Just saying. Also, I wanted to have a realistic catchment estimate. If you need to build a so-called beat field station on open land several kilometers from town, you're going to have less ridership. And I wanted to model that. So let's explore my proposed alignment in more detail. Abidjan is the western terminus since connecting farther to Yamasakuro fell short of my 50 point cutoff. I'm starting the route at Gar Abidjan Lagoon, which is where ECOWAS master plan proposes to start the high-speed rail to Lagos. Then we're traveling into Ghana and 280 kilometers later arrive at Takoradi. There's a rail corridor along the coast that we could clip into, and I suggest using the existing Esamin rail station for the new high-speed rail. Next is Cape Coast, which I consider not including since it's smaller and only about 65 kilometers from Takoradi, but it does offer connections to over half a million people, and is also one of the largest tourist destinations in Ghana, which could spark some ridership as well. I'm following Utility Corridor and propose a station north of the city center. Then we reach Accra, the capital and largest city of Ghana. There is a spur rail connection down to the city center, but I prefer to use the existing rail right of way that stays farther north and connects the Tema and towards the east. This would also allow connections to the airport and across Ring Road. Plus, this proposed station is about a mile from where I used to live, and you gotta think about those study abroad students at the University of Ghana. Next is Lome, the only stop in Togo. Just like Accra, I propose not to take the spur rail right of way into town, but to follow the existing right-of-way that stays north of downtown and connects easier to the east. I decided to connect through Cantano, not Puerto Nuevo and Benin, since it's larger and better aligned on the corridor. Also, there's an existing train station downtown, which could be utilized for high-speed rail. Lagos is the largest city on the corridor and the only city that has existing passenger rail service, connecting up to Ibadan. I propose to use the same station as that service, Ibute Meta Station, and then connect through Lagos Island and along the coast to continue east. Something which, understandably, is easier said than done. Getting through Lagos Island may be the trickiest and most expensive part of the corridor to construct. This is basically West Africa's Manhattan. Next are two quick stops, one in Ode, south of town, and another in Ore, north of town, with the idea being that each of these could be served with a beat field stop since they don't have any obvious other rights of way, and the cities are small enough that you don't exclude many people in the coverage zone by constructing out of town. Now we enter the eastern anchor of the corridor, a series of million plus population cities that string together in southern Nigeria. Starting with Benin City, which is not in Benin, but about the same size as Benin's largest city, I suggest to follow utility right-of-ways and place a station south of town. Then we go 110 kilometers south to Wari, also with over 2 million people in the catchment area for a station that I suggest to place on the eastern part of town, again following the utility corridor. 
Yenagoa serves just over a million people in a catchment area for my proposed beet field station northeast of the city center. Then we arrive at Port Harcourt, the largest city in southern Nigeria. I set up the station along an existing rail line just east of the Woji River. We continue through Aba that has a rail right-of-way that runs directly through the city. Then to Uyo, where honestly I couldn't identify a great spot for a station, so I just assume I'm sighting a few kilometers north of town. And then we end in Calabar, which is also the proposed terminus for Nigeria's west-east coastal rail line proposal. I have the train running next to a highway with an adjoining utility right-of-way, ending in the north of the city. From here, it's tempting to connect with the existing train service in Douala, Cameroon, but that's just too far and with too weak demand. By the way, special thanks to Nigeria for having so many city names with only three letters. It really helps fit them all on the map. We're going to look deeper in just a second at the expected demand on this route. But before we do, just a quick reminder to click on all the buttons to support this channel, if you want to. The more likes and subscribers I get, the more this video will be viewed and the more likely high-speed rail in West Africa will actually be built. So no pressure, but the future of the project is in your hands. Do you have other corridors you think I should look at or other topic suggestions? Let me know in the comments if so. Now let's dive into the expected demand for our corridor. There is a lot going on with this graphic, but generally the more and the thicker the orange bars between any two cities, the higher the demand scores. Two major takeaways here. First, Lagos and Port Harcourt emerge as the largest and most important hubs. Lagos has the most city pairs that score well enough to include on this graphic. However, Port Harcourt actually ranks better in terms of total gravity score connected to it, which really surprised me. While Port Harcourt is only about half the size of Lagos, it has great proximity with several cities that have over a million people each, especially Aba, which is the largest single gravity score on the corridor. Second, there is solid scoring across this entire map. Every segment includes at least one city pair that scores over 50, which is a great score. For comparison, remember that famous high-speed rail routes like Paris to Lyon often score in the mid-30s in my index. Keep in mind, I'm only showing bars for scores 20 or better, so even the thin connections are decent high-speed rail pairs. Also, every single bar shows ranks nearly twice as high as San Francisco to Los Angeles, a city pair with immense focus for high-speed rail in the US. And that gets to the reason I love focusing on these videos on the Global South. This is an example of a corridor that has incredible potential for high-speed rail, even more so given the mediocre infrastructure for road and air alternatives in the region, the world-leading growth in these cities, and the increasing economic connectivity and expansion throughout West Africa. This project deserves just as much attention and investment as any other high-speed rail proposal out there. When we talk about the potential of high-speed rail, it's not just a vanity project for countries that have resources to waste. It's actually a technology that may have more potential and deserve more focus in the Global South, especially in West Africa. So the next time I'm on YouTube and I search for high-speed rail, I would love to see West Africa suggested as one of my geographies of interest. Let's see if we can make that happen. That's all I've got for today. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.